Ed, thanks very much. Mark, we really appreciate you joining us. This is a, a very powerful vehicle with 450 miles range, but also a very high price tag. Who are you aiming this product at? Well, if we look at the current Escalade, you know, we sold over a million units, and we, we you know, one out of every three of these uh, SUVs in this um, luxury segment is an Escalade. So we've got a very successful brand. Um, it's been, you know, an unbelievable vehicle for Cadillac and General Motors, but um, this is added to business. So we know there's people that um, are wanting an electric um, three-row SUV, full-size SUV. We're going to be the first ones to really bring it here uh, with an iconic brand. So we know this is uh, in addition to our internal combustion en engine uh, Escalade, and you can see it as the next step in the design language for Cadillac, both inside and out. And so this is going to be you know, right on the, on the cutting edge of everything. It's, it's the Escalade uh, standard of the world. It really is. So you already have the Hummer, though, which mm -hmm. is de definitely on the cutting edge of everything, right? And early adopters who are waiting for a big electric vehicle, I'm assuming went out and got that. Um, who's left to, to buy the Escalade at 130000 to start? Yeah, I was going to say, well, the Ultimate platform here that we're talking about is very flexible, and it's very different than the SUV offered from Hummer. And so you'll see it in the, um, the proportions here uh, where we, we really are going after efficiency with 455 miles of range. That's a big deal um, for families and people who, who travel. Um, so it's a, it's a big range vehicle, but it's also 750 horsepower. Um, the, the Hummers are in the 1,000 horsepower stand, you know, the, in that part of, the, part of the market there. So it's a little bit different uh, customer. It's very different from a duty cycle standpoint, but it's still built on the 24 mod pack that we use in our battery electric truck platforms. There has been some criticism about these big uh, b battery packs. Um, Bloomberg New Energy Finance, for example, wrote that um, you're using a lot of lithium that maybe should be left for the smaller electric vehicles. How do you respond to that? Uh, well, General Motors is going to make both, number one. So we're going to make everything from the Bolt with an LTM-based um, pack here as we bring it back online um, to the Equinox, to the Blazer. So those are right in the biggest segments uh, in the world at price points that are um, you know, the most affordable uh, right in the wheelhouse of, of those big volume segments. So we're going to do that too, but um, you know, technology changes. And so anybody that thinks that we're going to have the same technology even a year from now, chemistry rise uh, with um, our battery systems across the whole industry um, isn't thinking about it quite right. Um, I think it's been mentioned before that uh, the telecommunications industry, there was all these people that were fearful of, of copper, right? Um, that all changed, right? And so you get into silicon, you get into chips, you get into all those things that are new technologies on a breaking transformation of the industry. And I can tell you the history books will see this as just the first step. All right, we're talking again with Mark Royce, president of General Motors, at the introduction of their brand new Cadillac's brand new uh, EV Escalade IQ. And, you know, I have driven the Escalade, uh, the V, with also about 700 horsepower, right? It's got a big V8, eats up a lot of gas. That's the problem you're trying to solve with this, but there are still gonna be people out there who want the V8. How long are you gonna sell um, the internal combustion engine Escalade next to the Escalade IQ? Well, you know, they're very different vehicles, again, um, in terms of the package. You know, we've got a huge amount of storage in this vehicle because of what we have up front um, where the engine used to be, and then also um, a longer wheelbase and the second row package is quite different too. So you add those things together, they're different vehicles, even though sort of the output on the power basis are similar. Um, we're gonna do both when, as long as people want both. And so, you know, if you look at this over the long term horizon, the market and the customer, um, we haven't sold a vehicle like this ever. The market has never seen a vehicle like this. This is the first standard of the world. And so we're gonna see what people do. You are gonna bring out the Silverado um, with I believe a similar battery pack and range, mm -hmm. at least as an option. Um, are you seeing price pressure because we're now seeing Ford capitulate and cut prices, Tesla obviously driving that. How do you expect the pricing to work out? Well, the pricing, uh, we're starting with the Silverado with our work truck. So, um, you know, our, our, our pricing and our ladders and our battery capacity and range capacity and duty cycle capacity on Silverado and Sierra are going to be for everybody's pocketbook and price point. So, you know, we know where uh, people want it from a work truck and our fleet standpoint. And then 
it'll it'll go all the way up through the RST, which will you know again be a, a high range, high module. But you don't have to just do that. So we're going to offer those things as options. Cutting price though means that we didn't see it right, um, and I don't think that's true. I think we're right in that wheelhouse of what people can afford and want. And so you know I, I feel good about our pricing. Are, are these vehicles going to be profitable when you start selling them? Uh, yes. And are you going to be able to make uh, a million of them in 2025? Not not the Escalade IQ. No, I just mean make a electric vehicles. Yeah, electric, electric vehicles. vehicles. Yeah, I think so. I think we're well on our track. You know, um, uh, we're well. We, we did 50,000 here the uh, first half of the year. That was our our, our target, and we did that. Um, you you got to bring cell plants along um, online as you do the assembly plants to make these. Um, our first plant in Lordstown, Ohio, is now full capacity and running really well. Um, the second one will be in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Um, right next to our Lyric um, uh, facility there. So that's coming online next. And the third one will be um, in Lansing, Michigan. And we're just, um, you know, doing the construction on that right now. So once we get past the first plant in Lordstown, Ohio, we learn how to make them. Um, we do it at, at volume. Um, we duplicate that uh, in, in Spring Hill and we duplicate that in Lansing. So the first ones out here, we knew were going to be, um, you know, something that we'd never done before. And we tackled that and we're doing it with high quality and we're doing it right. So, um, um, those are, you know, that's how you get into volume production. I got to ask about the negotiations with the UAW. Um, are you prepared to make an expensive investment in raising those costs because their demands are, I think uh, they said, pretty audacious? Yeah, I can't comment on um, what people say or, or don't say about that. We are um, negotiating with our represented workforce uh, in earnest, as we always do. And we're, we're there to make a, a good agreement, a fair agreement, an agreement that works for everybody. And that's all I have to say.